My name is Michael Weiss. I'd like to welcome you guys to the 25th anniversary of the next Ice Age, a class reunion. You know, it's it's amazing to see so many familiar faces here that I remember growing up uh, in the Baltimore area, and it all started for me at Northwest Ice Rink with uh, with Nathan and Tim. And it started with, I remember, gosh, I just saw Jeff Merica a few minutes ago. I've heard Philip Dulabon is here. You know, all these people that I grew up with as a kid, and it all started with, with Nathan and Tim. Um, I remember skating at Northwest Ice Rink, and I remember we would be out there blasting, you know, like Def Leppard and Salt and Pepper, and we had the speakers booming, and then the coaches would come out. And Tim would like run over and turn the music and be like, Aah! you know, and the music screeches and then classical music would come on. And all of a sudden we'd hit, you know, ballet form and our arms and posture and everything. And, you know, at that point we were kind of like annoyed by it because, you know, we're 12 and 13 years old. And now I have so much appreciation for that influence um, that they had on myself and I'm sure all these other skaters have too. And now they're influenced for 25 years uh, with the next Ice Age. Um, and I remember something specifically, actually, that Tim said to me when he was coaching me. Um, I was very excited because I had a new program and I was not skating well. And I missed all my jumps and I was doing it for, for months. I couldn't get my stuff. And then finally I was really excited and I came running up to him and I said, I said, Tim, I was like, I skated a perfect program yesterday. You should have seen it. I skated a perfect program. And he's like, you skated a perfect program? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I landed all my jumps. And he's like, no, you skated a clean program. <laughs> and, it, and that just always stuck with me. I was like, he's right, I skated a clean program. And that's the, the mindset that he always had with the next Ice Age and with my skating was that it's never perfect. It's always can be a little bit better. And that's all the attention to detail. And that's the things that the next Ice Age does. It's not just about the jumps and the triple axles and the quads. It's about putting on a performance. And that's what, what they have done for years. Um, so thank you both for that and instilling that in me and all the skaters that you have affected here. Michael. <laughs> and speaking of perfection, um, the next person who I will be introducing is not only, well, he doesn't even really need an introduction. He is, um, hosts his own skating um, cooking show. He's hosts his own HGTV show. He's, I mean, he does it all. He wins Olympic gold medals. He's an incredible role model to a lot of figure skaters around the world and role model to myself. And I'm proud to call him a very good friend as well. So please welcome Olympic champion, Mr. Brian Boyd. Thank you. Well, Tim and Nathan and I were trying to figure out when and where we met each other today. And we, we've been, we did national championships for years together, and we couldn't, we couldn't figure out where and when, but we just know that we have known each other for a very long time. I remember watching Nathan in the national championships as a novice and junior and thinking, this is one talented skater. He's just the all-around package. Not only is he very creative, but he's also athletic. And more recently, Tim and I actually spent a lot of time together when I was traveling in Champions on Ice uh, with Dorothy Hamill, and he was putting together some of her most amazing programs. I was not, however, lucky enough to see the John Curry Company, um, but I, I, I knew that it was filled with incredibly talented skaters. I knew a lot of them from the national championships and they had gone into the, the company and I knew it was innovative and uh, tasteful and intricate and something that was uh, ahead of its time really. But I was fortunate enough to tour with Dorothy Hamill and to watch Dorothy train and perform with Tim's guidance and I really feel that if you've ever had um, the luck of being able to watch Dorothy Hamill perform. I think her heart and her quality of skating is really filled with what Tim has given her through his choreography and his heart. And I can only assume that that's what John Curry had in mind when he was um, taking on these young skaters that were so talented um, and trying to fill them with the, the, the purest aspect of 
of skating and trying to nurture them into great choreographers and performers. And I feel like that's what uh, these guys do with the next Ice Age, uh, giving people a chance to perform and to see the, uh, the versatility and the edge quality. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the past, uh, you know, few years about skating's losing some of the nuances and the, the musicality and the edge quality. And I really feel that this is what the next Ice Age uh, contributes back to the young generation. There are so many important things to learn from performing. It's the, the camaraderie, and, and with the Next Ice Age, they do mostly ensemble work. They do edge. It's basically like modern dance that happens to be on the ice. Uh, but there are so many important things to learn from performance, giving people who, have, like, we've had an opportunity to perform at a national level. A lot of the people here have had opportunity to perform in venues around the United States, and we're very lucky because we have had that opportunity. It's really important to give the opportunity to younger skaters who may either want to skate recreationally, they may not want to compete for an Olympic medal. Um, they have this opportunity to feel what it's like to perform, that feeling after you finish where you feel like that it's just the, the best accomplishment that you've had. But more importantly, I think it's what the performance teaches you as a person. I always tell parents that it's not whether your kids win or lose, it's what you learn through the process. It's the tools that you take from being a performer and a skater that you can use in different aspects of your life. And that is really so valuable. So I really, yeah, I really love, my hat is off to what Next Ice Age um, does. And I want to thank you all for being here. It's so important that these companies, especially like Next Ice Age, exist for those reasons. Thank you guys for your support, and um, and thank you for having me here. Thank you, Brian. Now uh, we have an answer to the question: What would Brian Boitano do? He'd speak to us and talk about the next thing. So thank you. Uh, I have the honor of now introducing our keynote speaker. Uh, who is a three-time U.S. national champion, a two-time world medalist, and a two-time Olympian. She also skated with the John Curry Skating Group. Please welcome Miss Jojo Starbuck. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. What a great experience it is to be in a room with so many kindred spirits who feel the way uh, we all feel about Tim and Nathan and the next Ice Age and skating. When I first worked with Tim and Nathan, I was in Vail, Colorado with John Curry's company. John had been invited to present his company at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City and also at the Kennedy Center in Washington. No one had ever heard or done such a thing as this before with skating. Ice on those prestigious skate stages. John Curry's company had performed in London's West End, in New York's Felt Forum, and at the Minskoff Theater on Broadway. But the Met? This was unheard of. John Curry had just invited Nathan and Tim to join the company. There was such excitement as we gathered in beautiful Vail, Colorado to create a new repertoire for the Met. Nathan and Tim were both a nervous wreck, as the Met would be their professional debut, as were the other new company members, such as Lori Nickel, Adita Dotson, Leanne Miller, Billy Faber, and David Santee. Having skated professionally for at least 10 years at this point, I immediately felt a motherly instinct to take Nathan and Tim under my wing as they embarked on their professional journey, never having any idea how far they would go. As you may have heard legend tell it, John was like a diamond with many facets, brilliant, warm, funny, shy, reserved, cold, 
and even cruel. <laughs> he had a vision which drove him to Olympic gold. But now, in this pinnacle moment for his company, he was relentlessly intent on the new wave of skaters understanding this vision and helping them to take it to new places. Tim and Nathan were meticulous students. They hung on every word and studied each nuance that John shared. It could be an emotionally tough journey. Remember those days? But they jumped on with vigor and became the backbone of talent with which John could shape his new works of art. One important thing that John inspired, which I had never really quite realized in my skating career before, was that skating, this kind of skating, was sacred. Every bit of it. Nothing could be taken for granted. Not an edge, not a three-turn, or even a look. A series of Chenet turns would be treated with as much reverence as a triple jump. Way before moves in the field were even in existence, John demanded that the control of edges and steps to your left be done as beautifully as those to your right. His approach to music, space, and choreography and that of the choreographers he brought to the ice, such as Elliot Feld, Laura Dean, Peter Martins, Twyla Tharp, and Lar Lubavitch, rang with such beauty and honesty that there was no going back to skating as we had known it before. It's as if we were changed beings on a magic carpet ride. Now, seeing Tenley Albright here tonight, my favorite Olympic champion of all time, I have to add that she must have been an, an inspiration to John Curry. Her musicality and her creativity and her attention, attention to every detail was everything that John was about. Thank you so much, Tenley, for that. Later, when John's company ended, Nathan and Tim were clearly committed to this beautiful journey and had to find a way to continue it and share it. Fortunately, here in Baltimore, they found a willing team of skaters and parents who drank the Kool-Aid, too. <laughs> I saw Pat and Martha move today. They were part of that original thing. It really sacrificed them. sacrificed and worked to continue this glorious vision of where skating could go and what it could be. That's when a new wave of skaters caught the vision. And that's why we're here tonight celebrating 25 years of creating magic and beauty on the ice. I believe that God gives each of us gifts in abundance. But to keep them, we must be good stewards of those gifts. John Cur Curry certainly was, as he launched a vision of what skating could be. And many who were so fortunate to be on that ride have planted those seeds for decades. I'm thinking of Dita Dodson, who coaches, the work Leanne Miller brought to Stars on Ice and countless television specials, the choreography that Lori Nickel brings to skaters, from Michelle Kwan to Gracie Gold, and of course, the work Dorothy Hamill, Tim, and Nathan did with the Ice Capades. All of these people in this work had their initial inspiration from John Curry. If you look at their work over the years, you can see the thread being carried through and woven into each piece of their work. But it was Nathan and Tim whose fortitude, passion, and probably insanity, <laughs> led them to bring us the next Ice Age. Nathan and Tim, with their breathtaking choreography for ensemble skaters, for soloists, and for teaching, have been great stewards of the gifts that they've been given. It's not just enough to present breathtaking performances at the Kennedy Center. For skating to be received and respected as a dance form, it must be a movement with an educational foundation, 
a foundation which gives us more than an occasional shooting star capturing everyone's attention. The next Ice Age is creating the brilliant, unforgettable performances, yes, but they are also putting a foundation underneath it, which will carry it for 25 more years, or more. <laughs> they are building a foundation of skaters who will go on to create choreography that others won't have the depth to create. A foundation that will rise up new coaches to keep this beautiful skating alive. A foundation to be the archetype and standard for what skating on ice can be. In Sochi, there was a lot of beautiful skating, but there were also so many moments that made me cringe and long for different rules for performances with a vast array of elements, not just the same things in the same order to different music. It made me grateful to know that the next Ice Age is a very present icon in a sport and art of figure skating. The next Ice Age is here to teach, to build, to create, to light the way, to explore, to break new ground, to break the mold, to pass forward what has been passed on to us. To everyone here who has been involved and who has supported the next Ice Age, its art and its education, I salute you and I thank you. <laughs> Next Saturday, most of the people in this room, on behalf of hundreds of skaters, Nathan and Tim, and thousands who have enjoyed your work, I want to thank you for being such great stewards of all that you have been given. From those early years in Vail to the tours, whether we were in empty, dark, freezing arenas in Canada or the dazzling stage of the Kennedy Center, whether we were at Yoyogi Stadium in Tokyo, in a shopping mall in Dubai, or skating around blue fissures of glycol in the ice at the Royal Albert Hall in London, you have carried the vision and are passing it forward. Regardless of the sacrifices and cost, you have been amazing performers, teachers, and inspirations for so many. So tonight, as we celebrate the next Ice Age, we celebrate you, Tim and Nathan. I think I speak for everyone in this room and legions more when I say we are grateful that John would be quite pleased <laughs> and we all can't wait for the next 25. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Still And now, without further ado, <laughs> I would like to introduce to you my good friends. The men of the hour, Nathan Birch, in alphabetical order, and Tim <laughs> Hello, all. Well, I'm so happy to see all of you. I can't tell you how much, I, how happy I am. But you know, it struck me this morning that as a choreographer, to stand up in front of a room of skaters that he has choreographed for, and I just thought, I hope they don't throw anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because you know, when time is short, you can't say, now dear, right? Um, I did want to tell you this one story that I keep thinking about too, also, is when I was working, I think with Jeff America, at one point. Yeah, don't worry, Jeff. Don't worry. We worked in Bel Air, Maryland, and uh, because it was halfway between Wilmington and here. And uh, when I would go there, it was in the morning, and this impossibly cute little skating girl would come up to me during my lessons and just stand next to me and smile. And I tried to engage her in conversation, and she would never say a word. 
And finally, after a while, I'd say, I think it's time for you to go skate now. And well, she just would have stood there. And this happened like week after week after week. I thought she was so charming, and it wasn't until a few years ago that I found out that that impossibly adorable child turned out to be a world champion figure skater named Kimmy Meisner. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you, Kimmy. Thank you so much for coming. You don't remember that, do you? Nope. nope. <laughs> All right, uh, as a little bit of shameless promotion, tomorrow we are offering a couple of new performances, and I'm, uh, I've choreographed a preview piece. It's not completely done yet, but they have something to do from beginning to end that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's sort of a nod to the past and a nod to the future. Um, I don't. I know there are some people here who remember our 1988 debut and a piece that I did called Machines. And I am previewing a new piece tomorrow called Short Ride on a Fast Machine. Oh yes, John Adams. John Adams, yeah. So we're very excited about that. I'm sure the skaters who were in it, it's, it's a pretty out there piece. Um, could I ask one favor, please? Could could past and present board members of the next Ice Age please raise their hand? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything. I mean, I've done a lot of writing about the 25 years, and I'm, I'm sorry, 25 years is... Martha, what? <laughs> She's trying to get my attention. Um, 25 years by anyone's standard is a long time. I don't care how old you are, it's just a long time. And there have been some people who I think if it weren't for their involvement, we might not be standing here after 25 years. So with your help, I would like to honor them. Uh, our first honorees were longtime board members, and I am ashamed to say, and they don't remember either, uh, how long they actually did it for, but you know, it's exhausting being on a, on a um, not-for-profit board, and they did it for a very long time. <laughs> and we appreciated it so much, and I just wanted, and after, you know, when board members come and go, we try and stay in touch, but we can't always, you know, because we're always, we're the next Dice Age, we're always after the next thing, you know? So, um, tonight, uh, I would love to honor uh, Bob and Linda Brennan. They have meant so much to me. I, I also with the ra uh, raised hands, who stayed at their house when they were rehearsing in the next day? Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice house. <laughs> um, our next honoree is, again, I think we might not be here if it weren't for this person, still. Um, after we had a lot of very high profile performances at the Kennedy Center and the American Dance Festival and things, things like that, our personal lives sort of, without going too much into detail, our personal lives sort of uh, took over for a while and we weren't able to, you know, it's such a hard job to stay on that circuit of, you know, these premier events and everything. And out of the blue fell this person who, I will say he has employed more Next Ice Age skaters probably than any single person. Um, for the last 14 years, we are going into our 14th season. Uh, this person, at, who is a managing owner of the Carousel Hotel, did I say that right? Yeah. Um, and we've just had such a wonderful relationship. I mean, at, at the end of the first year, I won't lie, at the end of the first year, we had a lot of kind of terse conversations, and he gave me one of the most valuable pieces of business advice I have ever heard. And he said, hey Tim, how about you stop telling me how to run my hotel and, and I stop telling you how to run your ice shop. And I 
gotta tell you, ever since then, it's been a really great relationship. Because <laughs> that's what we do now. <laughs> Anyways, again, he is, this is a business relationship we are celebrating, and we are very happy to, to honor him, Mr. Michael James. cannot be here tonight. She is quite elderly and does not get around very much anymore, but really, talk about an angel to this company. She has given a grant to us every, pretty much every year of our existence that I can think of, and part of that grant, just so it becomes real to you, part of that grant is helping pay for this event. And uh, she has helped an innumerable amount of figure skaters. I, I just can't even count them. Paul Wiley, one of them, who's unfortunately stuck at the airport, I guess. Um, his, his flight was delayed. Um, but I just wanted to mention her, even though she can't be here tonight. And uh, her name is Lisa Webster. So can we give her all a round of applause? One more note about tomorrow. Uh, it's cold, so bring something warm, okay? <laughs> I hope to see as many of you out there as possible, and we are really looking forward to that as well. So thank you very much. So before I have a few things to say, there have been a, some recent changes uh, with our board that we're very excited about. Uh, and our organization. Um, I've been the artistic director and president uh, for 25 years. And for the first time, I finally found somebody to take that ball and chain off of me and, uh, <laughs> and be our president. And that is Mr. Eric Price, who I owe a great deal to. As an artistic director, it takes a certain amount of tenacity and, um, uh, I don't know, sometimes you have to be a real jerk. So, I couldn't think of anyone better to take over that position than my dear friend and partner, Tim Murphy. Tim has made these last 25 years with the next Ice Age possible for me to have been a part of. We wouldn't have been able to do it alone. We really needed to do it as a team, and you've been the best. We also need to mention we have uh, two newly elected board members that are here tonight. Amy McPartland, who is the chair of this event. And Mr. Bob Garnett, who's over here as well. Thank you very much. Okay. It's been an honor serving the next Ice Age for 25 years as the president and artistic director. I'm extremely excited, however, about my new role, which is education director. Each person here deserves an individual thank you. As diverse as we are in this room, we share in this greater collective known as the next Ice Age. When we started, I vowed to give the same opportunity to skaters that was afforded to me by John Curry so that others could experience what I had been given. These fine young skaters you have met tonight will perform for you tomorrow two previews of new dances as well as the curriculum of exercises known as the Next Ice Edge. 
<laughs> that's our set that's our seminar and our whole educational arm just newly developed the company and residents take both their art and education seriously they know the process is as important to the performance as the performance is in class and in rehearsal we are gathering knowledge and in the performance we are giving that knowledge. Alan Kriegsman wrote, if dancing is the way angels walk, then skating is the way angels dance. Our work anchors light into our world. That in turn emanates an eternal signal that says we are here and we care. This is how live performance art lives forever. This is why we share a love for skating. And this is why the next Ice Age exists. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Nathan and Tim. Thank you guys so much for encouraging and inspiring so many of us skaters and so many people here in so many different ways through the next Ice Age, so thank you. Um, and also, I would like to take this uh, opportunity. Um, Tim and Nathan have a special friend who could not be here this evening, and we would like to present them with a special gift in their honor. from having fun, okay? Yeah. We came here to have fun. So thank you all for coming out. Thank you for supporting the next Ice Age. I'm honored to be a part of it. I'm honored to be here tonight. So thank you. Let's have fun. Let's have a few drinks and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you.